Hey guys, this video is all about mastering the art of watering. Improper watering is the number one thing that will kill your succulent. So I'm going to go through A through Z of all the important tips and how to of watering your succulents so you can keep them alive and you can avoid the dreaded root rot. So succulents grow and they come from in arid regions of the world, and highlands and areas, the deserts, areas that don't get a lot of rain. And so that's why they look the way they do. When you look at the leaves of a succulent, you can see they are really filled with water. So that's one thing to remember. Succulents don't need a lot of water. If you give them too much water, you're going to kill it. It's the most common way to kill it, as I said previously. So remember, succulents are really a desert plant. So once I got into the world of succulents, I never knew there were so many varieties and so many different types of succulents and cacti. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of different varieties of succulents and cacti and it, the varieties are amazing and you don't think about the desert flowering but at certain times of the year the desert is covered with flowers so it's an amazing thing to see if you ever get to see it in person so just remember there are so many varieties if you have a very specific type that you're wanting to care from care for and you're not wanting just to have a general collection you need to do a lot of research on that one particular plant so you'll know exactly what it needs not all succulent needs exactly the same thing now, the misconceptions about succulents and cacti is they are carefree and they don't need any care. That's not true at all. They do need a certain level of care. It's just not like your normal house plants that have to ha have so much more care than these. So these are a more carefree plant, but it doesn't mean that they don't need care. Now, one sign of soil exhaustion or basically another way of saying if the soil needs to be replaced and replenished, is when you have water sitting on the surface or it just drains through extremely quickly. So you've got to, got to be able to watch for that balance of a nice, slow, steady absorption of the water you're adding and that it's not sitting on the surface or just running through the pot like the, the soil is not even there. In those two cases, you want to consider refreshing your soil. So terracotta is a great choice for succulents because it is breathable. You never want to paint terracotta inside or outside the pot if you have succulents or cacti in it because you want the pot to actually breathe. So a lot of people might paint a pot to help it retain moisture for their normal plants. But in the case of this, you don't want to do that. You want to leave it in its natural state. And it is a great choice. Now, this one is plastic. This one is fired clay that has a glossy finish. And this is fired clay that has a matte finish, which probably means it's more breathable. Plastic is not as breathable as the terracotta. So that's one thing to remember. If you're watering schedule is very very off then you may want to consider plastic because it will retain the moisture a little bit better now standing water is the enemy of the succulent and most cacti if you have a outdoor succulent or cacti and you have it sitting in a humidity tray or a thing like this you want to be very careful about the pot sitting there because as long as it's sitting there you think this is draining out and it's overflowing the pot that may not be the case. It may be getting rain on it and it may be just consistently, the soil may be consistently wicking that water up into the pot. And that is the surest way to kill the succulent with too much moisture, too much water and soggy soil. Now, one thing I like to do with my succulents and a lot of the plants I have, especially the bonsai, is when I first put them in the pot, I put a paper towel at the base of it and that helps so prevent soil wash from washing out, soil wash out and air, huge air pockets in the soil. So that's one thing you might want to consider at the base of each pot before you start. Just put either a single ply or a two ply paper towel. Don't fold it in half if it's two ply, but if it's just one ply, fold it in half and cover that hole to help just retain just a little bit of moisture, but at the same time, allow a lot of water to drain right through it. Now, overpotting a succulent is another problem. If you have a tiny succulent and you've got it in a giant pot, you think that's going to help it grow even faster. That's not really true. That can lead to too much moisture because you have this small succulent in there that's only going to draw up a small amount of water and you have this huge pot with a huge amount of soil. That can lead to excessive moisture as well. So just remember you want the appropriate size pot for the succulent. Something like this fits perfectly on this size and believe it or not even this one is nice if you have a small tray below it that will help with the humidity and that will keep it just a little bit moist and if it's not outside if it's on a windowsill that's perfect. So there's a lot of benefits to having succulents indoors because when you have them outdoors, even in the warmer months, you don't have control over the rain and how much water they're getting into their pot. So that's the thing to remember that you may want to go up even higher on your 
amendments that help drainage. But the thing about great, the great thing about having them indoors is you can control that environment and you know exactly how much water they're getting and you can test it periodically. But when they're outdoors, if you live in an area that gets a lot of annual rainfall, that may be too much for your succulent and it could lead to root rot. Now, another danger of overwatering is it can lead to mold and it can attract more pests to your plant. So that's another thing to remember. Don't overwater because that can also have other consequences as well. Now, buying a really small humidifier near your garden window can help quite a bit because that can increase the humidity and lower the need for watering as often as you might think. I'll link a really nice humidifier that I have, and I think it's really small and it's compact, and you can get it really close to your succulents and still not have to worry about using up a lot of water. But the humidifier really is a great thing in the wintertime when it's, the air is really dry and it's being dried out by your HVAC or AC system. Now, some plants, if you've ever been to a place where they have the little waterfalls and you'll see the little tiny foggers in there and it's creating a fog around the plant, that can be really, really beneficial to your succulents. If you get one of those and you put it in your water tray and it just creates just a little bit of fog, have it on a timer or just plug it in once a day, that can really create a perfect environment, especially in the morning. It, it's kind of like that same arid environment. Early in the morning, you have humidity, and as the sun comes out, that kind of dries up and goes away. So one of those little tiny foggers can be a great addition. Actually, that's one of the things I don't have, and I'm planning on ordering one. So if I find one that I really like, I will link it below. So guys, top watering is the most common way of watering, especially if they're in a large pot and you can't pick it up easily. So this is the most common way, and this is something I just picked up. Usually I just use my uh, copper watering can, but I love this because I can get in below the plant and put water exactly where it needs it, right at the base. This little device right here is a great way to do it. And so I'm not even sure what the name of this is. It may be on the bottom of the thing, but uh, this is called a watering bottle, so it's not really a specific type. Maybe there is a name. If you know it, please let me know because I don't know the exact name of this. But anyways, what I'm doing is I'm just going around the base of the plant and just adding water to it, trying not to get too much water on the leaves, but I just wanna put it right there where it's, the roots are meeting the base of the plant and that really helps. Now the second way is submersion watering and you do this by just taking your entire pot and putting it in the water and carefully, very slowly letting it sink under the water and just sit there for 30 seconds to a minute. Now this type of gravel I have on here is actually an aquarium gravel and that's what I always recommend because that prevents your soil from floating away and having all kinds of problems. So you can just pick it back out of, out of the water, let it drain and put it back where you need it. Remember, the submersion watering is great for really small ones because sometimes you may think you're getting enough water by using a device like this, but it may not be. You can see all the bubbles coming out, and so that's really a great way to do it. This is a very common way to water small bonsai, which are called shohin or mame. Now, another great tool for watering is a watering globe that you can fill up and then stick it into the soil. I had one many years ago, but I haven't seen it in a long time, so somewhere along the way it got lost. But if you do a lot of traveling or you don't just don't have time to water every day or on a regular schedule, I shouldn't say every day because you don't want to water every day, but if you don't water on a regular schedule, put that into the soil and it will slowly release water over time. But you want to make sure the tip of the watering globe is not too large or it will just allow all the water to pass through at one given time. Now signs of shriveled leaves or plump leaves or a musty smell in the soil could be an indication of overwatering. So that's one thing you'll want to remember is these succulents are not something that you want to water. As I previously corrected myself, don't water every day. This is something you water rarely, three to four weeks in between waterings or use your meter to tell when it's very dry one to two inches below the surface. So the soak and dry method is one of the best where you completely saturate your succulent or cacti completely and then allow it to completely dry out. So the soak and dry method works great. Now sometimes you can just look at the soil top and see that it looks extremely dry. Even if you don't have your meter handy, handy you'll know just by taking a look at it, if it looks really, really dehydrated, that's a sign that your succulent or cacti really needs watering. Now as I've said so many times before, having a good meter is so critical for so many points in the garden whether it's pH, light, temperature, and in this case with succulents, moisture meter. So these things come in great and they come in really handy. So I really love them. I'll put a link to that as well. But I think that's one of those things that you really need. If you're going to grow a lot of succulents and or cacti, you really need one of these. It will help you quite a bit along the way. Now remember, if you're in an area that does get winters, that is going to be one of those things you're going to slow down your watering schedule quite a bit. 
winter brings on dormancy in so many plants and the same as succulents. They're going to slow down their water uptake. So remember, you're going to adjust the watering schedule accordingly and move it out maybe half as much as you did previously, but use your meter just to make sure it's not completely dried out. So one reason I really love this aquarium gravel is it looks great with the succulents. It looks like it's in a natural environment. But another thing to consider is that this aquarium gravel also acts as a stone mulch. It helps it maintain moisture in the soil. So you're not seeing sunlight hitting the soil directly. It's acting as that little bit of mulch that will prevent dehydration. And it looks great. I just like it. Now, one of my upcoming videos is about rainwater harvesting and using a rain barrel. And so the best type of water for almost all plants is rainwater because that's what they're going to receive in the wild. Rainwater tends to be a little bit more acidic, and that's what succulents prefer, a little bit more acidity. So if you can possibly do rainwater collection and water your succulents with that, that's great. It's going to not have the chemicals, the chlorine, and things that might be detrimental to your succulents. So that's one thing to try to remember. If you can get a rain barrel set up, and put a small pump in it and i'm going to create a video that goes through the entire thing a to z but that's one thing to consider even if you just have a jug sitting near a downspout of your gutter that'd be a great thing to do as well so a lot of succulents grow in really poor soils or soils that do not have a lot of nutrition so when you're going to fertilize you want to make sure you dilute it maybe by half or even more so you don't burn your plant another great idea is to water it before you fertilize if you're using a liquid fertilizer and have the soil already well wet and then come in with your fertilizer. That way you don't have to worry about burning your succulent or causing any damages through fertilization. Hey guys, so I hope this video helped you learn a little bit more about watering your succulents and keeping them very healthy by not improperly watering. So just remember, go back, take a look through it and see if there's something that you might have missed because if your succulents start to have issues, it could be the number one issue with them is usually overwatering. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate every subscriber and every view. It really means a lot to me. If, you, if I said something wrong or I misstated something, which I often do, please let me know in the comments below. Have a great day.